Happy Halloween, everyone. It's Halloween 2022, and we're going to get into the Halloween lore. The question I've been asking is, what do All Saints, what is the origin of Halloween? Like, what do Halloween, All Saints, All Souls have to do with anything? And, like, why are they on these particular dates? So I do a lot of research. There seems to be, in short, kind of two main camps. There are those who believe that Halloween is derived directly from Sawin or Samhain is how it's spelled, which is a Celtic, Druidic, Pagan festival. It's a harvest festival. And there are those who believe that uh, Halloween is completely a Catholic holiday. And, you know, you can make the case for both of them. But you have to, like, understand that there is... What, what blew my mind was there is this video called... Uh, it's like the, the History of Halloween by Randall Carlson on the... You can look it up on YouTube on the channel After School. It's a very good channel. The History of Halloween. And he goes way into the details, apparently, throughout the world. From October 31st to November 2nd is universally uh, celebrated around the world. Uh, a festival commemorating the dead. You know, and so the Spaniards, apparently, they arrived in South America. And they encountered the Peruvians who are in the Southern Hemisphere. And they, it, it, for some reason, they celebrate the Day of the Dead on the same day as All Saints Day. And they have the, this festival. So that is curious. And so what that means is that there is some sort of universal thing that is irrespective of culture. Of why these particular days are sacred. Why they are dedicated to the dead. And why some say that the veil between the living and the dead or the material and the spiritual is thinnest during this time. It's a liminal space. If you've seen those liminal space like backrooms memes, where it's like those weird kind of dreamlike states, or you go you don't want to go to the back rooms because you're like you don't want to get stuck in the liminal space. What liminal means is it's it's like between two things. So liminal, uh, for example, a waterfall would be the liminal space between water and air. Or a sunset would be the liminal between day and night. And the liminal space of Halloween is it's between summer and winter. It's between life and death. And it's, I believe, about halfway between the autumnal equinox and the winter solstice. Because the Druids, they had all their festivals kind of on oriented around the equinoxes and the uh, solstices. And around that, I believe they had eight total. So Beltane and Sawin are the ones that are equally distant apart. Uh, Beltane is in the springtime, and Beltane is also considered to be like when the veil is thinnest. So Sawin, you know, is pagan holiday. And so why is All Saints Day and All Souls Day during that time? And it's you can explain that because you have to know the history of the Catholic Church. Pope Gregory the Great, uh, he was, during the seven, the early 700s, he was also actually a relative of St. Benedict, but, you know, he was doing all kinds of uh, missions, he was sponsoring all kinds of missions into England and Germany, I believe, and so England, they were celebrating, the Druids who kind of, the pagans who lived in this area, they were trying to Christianize them and convert them during this time period. You know, the Irish, they convert the English, the English convert the Germans, and so forth, so on. But Pope Gregory the Great, he was... there. Uh, okay, so also you have to understand that there is this, under, there is this uh, ethos within the Catholic Church of celebrating those who are dead. You know, in Maccabees, they pray for the dead. There's so many instances within the Church Fathers and the Bible where... We are kind of acknowledging the dead, praying for the dead, those in purgatory, the church triumphant, the church suffering, the church militant, and we are kind of acknowledging you know, on all saints days those who have made it to heaven because that's where we're all trying to go. So it's in, so all saints day and honoring those who are martyred and those who are saints already who, are, who have made it, that is that was preceded before like the 700s. But there was no universal time when it was celebrated. So what happened was Pope Gregory the Great, he moved All Saints Day in that particular region 
to coincide with the English kind of Germanic peoples who were celebrating Samhain and similar festivals in order to kind of repurpose and re-Christianize these festivals. It's not that it was directly derived from it, but it's more like it was reoriented in the same way that Moses, he had a serpent staff, you know, he struck the rock and water came out. Does that mean that Moses is using the symbol of the stake in the same way that Satan in the Garden of Eden is? No, it's like symbols can be repurposed or reappropriated towards different means and different ends. So in the same way, these pagan festivals can be, you know, we can connect the dots between, you know, the cultures of the pagans, the English and the Germans with the Catholic understanding and the new religion of Christianity during the 700s. So uh, there is this, going back to the universality of this time, there is the Taurus constellation. And you can see over, over as the year progresses, the constellation has progressed across the sky. And in the shoulder of the Taurus, there is the Pleiades star cluster. And this is very ancient. You can see that. And so when Halloween happens, that's when the Pleiades star cluster is peaked. And it's like at midnight during Halloween, that's when the Pleiades has peaked in the sky with the Taurus. And so there's all this like uh, ancient symbolism of a bull being stabbed by a god and then like blood shooting out of it. And there's also the torrid meteor shower. So the meteor shower is comes from originally from uh, a big comet. I forgot the name of it. It starts with an N. But basically comets in, from the ancients universally were uh, considered to be bad omens or to predict a cataclysm or disaster. So if you saw a comet in the sky, probably some sort of major ca catastrophe is gonna happen down the road. So they're also called broom stars, comets. But during, on Halloween, you can see the Taurides uh, meteor shower. Per, it's coming towards earth from the direction of the Pleiades during midnight on Halloween. So it looks, you can see in the sky, there's the Taurus constellation, and then in the shoulder of the Taurus constellation, there is the Pleiades. And then from there, you can see all these meteors kind of coming. They're all uh, coming towards Earth. So it kind of looks like, a, you know, Star Wars when they're like warp speed, going light speed. And it looks like kind of like that. So it looks as if there's all these streams of light or meteors emanating from the Pleiades. So that was actually the beginning of a new year for many of these pagan cultures including the druids it was their new year when the pleiades peaked in the sky so also what's interesting is that these you know comets are associated with disaster they're also associated with the global flood you know every culture around the world understands that there was a global flood and they all have stories of it so the pleiades was also associated with the global flood because it was believed that when the Pleiades was high in the sky, that's when the global flood happened long ago. The Mexican pagans, you know, they, they would do human sacrifices on November 17th when they would, uh, you know, when the Pleiades is still high in the sky, but when the Torrids is also really visible during that time because they believed that uh, they were trying to appease the gods and prevent the end of the world. So... Uh, yeah, so as you know, Europe became Christianized, All Saints Day and All Souls Day gets moved to the same time of the year as Samhain. And, you know, it's the thing is, it is like a it's not just like arbitrary. It's like it's based off of these actual objective patterns in the sky. It's based off the cosmos when these festivals are happening. So it's not like Christians just purely did for political motives. Like it actually makes sense within the Christian con context because God created the cosmos and God created all these patterns to begin with. So it's just like, what's wrong with orienting, you know, your own thing towards what is objectively there, which are these patterns in the sky. Uh, so, you know, but American Halloween is, I didn't realize this, but it's kind of like its own thing. And what happened was, 
So there's a few traditions that develops, trick-or-treating and jack-o'-lanterns. So trick-or-treating, there, there was, it came from the English and they had this thing called souling where people would dress up in masks. And this happened also kind of during Samhain, which was a fire festival. Uh, in Samhain, there's kind of more of an ethos of fear because they believe that spirits would like roam the earth and that, you know, you could get actually kidnapped and you're, have your soul stolen by like fairies or various evil spirits during this time. So that's why people would have like leave out different dishes to appease them. But this was also a time when the pagans believed that you could actually meet up with your ancestors and have conversations with your ancestors. And so some people, they would have dome suppers. They would have like a, they'd leave the shutters open and everything. They'd have dinner and then they would like leave food for what they believe was their ancestors would come and eat with them. Um, and But there was also kind of like a, people would wear masks because they didn't want to get spirited away by these evil spirits as well. And so there's elements of this that persist with the English and there is, but it's, it's completely reoriented. It's like its own thing. It's called souling and there's soul cakes. So these, these children come house to house wearing masks and they receive these, these cookies. My roommate made uh, some soul cakes and it's kind of like an English, what English call uh, cookies, Americans call biscuits. It's, it's more like a biscuit or a scone than like really a cookie or a cake, but they're all right. They're all right. I could see why it would be quite the, quite the treats back then. We have so much like sugar now that I feel like I don't appreciate those traditional foods as much as I should, but <laughs> the soul cakes, they're good. So that's where trick or treating came from. And also the, so jack-o'-lanterns, that's an Irish tradition. And jack-o'-lanterns were originally turnips. People would carve turnips. And what happened was there's this legend where Jack made a deal with the devil or he he's, the devil comes for him to like take him, but then he's able to trick him like a few times. Like he, he traps him in a tree or something like that. He, he does a few different things where he's able to trick the devil more than once. And he's able to like fend off the devil. The devil's not able to take him to hell right away. And on like the second or third, uh, this happens like two or three times after the second or third time he is able to make a deal with the devil saying, Hey, don't take me to hell when I die. And the devil has to agree because he's trapped. And so what happens is uh, when Jack dies, he's not like saintly. He's not allowed into heaven, but he's also not cast into hell because he made the deal with the devil. So he's forced back to the earth to wander uh, in the darkness of earth forever but the devil feels sorry for him, so he gives him like an ember from hell, and he gives it to, to Jack to use as like a light or like a lantern as he's wandering the earth. And so he becomes Jack of the Lantern, and he puts it inside a turnip with a face in it. And so he's like walking around with a turnip, with, with a face with like glowing eyes and mouth. And so the Irish, this was the Irish legend, and because of the great, uh, the Irish potato famine in the 1800s, that, that caused that major influx of Irish Americans into America. And American Halloween became kind of a, like an influx of a combination of all these different traditions. The Irish realized that pumpkins are much better for making lanterns. They're easier to carve compared to turnips. I've never carved a turnip, but it just seems pretty challenging. So, you know, all these traditions came together in, in America. And so that's why American Halloween is kind of unique. And then from there, you know, it's like all these other things came out. Um, there's kind of this idea of things are inverted for a night and people dress up as ghouls or goblins, whatever. Um, and there's there's kind of this understanding that for one night, it's like things are flipped upside down and it's kind of like a carnival. It's fun. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily demonic, but... Um, it's probably true, you know, that the spiritual realm is closer or it's peeled back or, or, or we're close to it on uh, Halloween compared to other times of the year. I believe it. And so that's, I mean, while I believe that it makes sense within a Catholic understanding that, you know, we believe that the saints are all around us all the time or the spiritual world's all around us all the time. So it's, it's not so crazy to believe that, yeah, maybe there is certain places, certain times of the year where 
like the spiritual world's more active than other times. Uh, but anyways, like the ethos of All Saints Day and All Souls Day is a lot different from the pagan ethos where it's like the pagans were more afraid of the evil spirits, which makes sense if they don't have any grace. They're more uh, trying to appease. Whereas the Catholics, they're more, uh, it's like looking forward to, it's like honoring reverence and also kind of like looking forward to our own making making it to uh making it to the other side as well it's more like a forward more positive thing more reverent thing memento more remember our own death it's more contemplative and i think fall is kind of a contemplative time you know it's like you know you're in transition you got the harvest you got kind of the fruition of all these things you got maturation things are cooling down so it's more uh, people are inside more a little bit and it's definitely kind of the transition between uh, different periods. So, you know, in, if you're in the fall of your life, maybe you're like in your 50s or something like that, or you're middle-aged and you're, you're kind of like contemplating things. It's a good time to like think about things and, and kind of uh, piece things together. So that's kind of my thought about the psychology of fall. Um, but it's definitely an interesting time. I... It's interesting to me that in this very secular atheistic culture, a lot of people, they love Halloween. They love the supernatural, but the rest of the time they, they believe, a lot of atheists, they believe in like ghosts and stuff. They believe in ghosts and ghouls and supernatural stuff, but they, they refuse to believe like any of the angels and anything that's like good, that God's real, but they'll believe that like ghosts are real and stuff. So it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. I think most people deep down, it's like realize that there is another realm out there. Uh, but if you guys like this, then leave a comment, leave a like. That's kind of a lot of the research that I've gleaned. Again, go check out Randall Carlson's uh, History of Halloween. It's very good. And I'll probably do another one of these videos about uh, Yule and Christmas because I did a lot of research last Christmas on that. It's interesting stuff. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy Halloween.